Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Spencer Kaplan. I am a PhD student at Yale University, and I'm training there as an anthropologist of technology. I'm tuning in from Berlin, where I am conducting some ethnographic fieldwork among the city's NFT community. That includes artists, collectors, technologists, and entrepreneurs. So I'm basically studying this globally distributed technology from a single setting, uh, one with a distinctive geography, history, and ethos. And based on what I've seen here so far, I'd argue that when it comes to the study of virtual goods, markets, and worlds, attention to actors' physical rootedness is critical, if not necessary, as a dimension of analysis. This remains a preliminary argument, but I'm offering it here as, as a kind of provocation, a call to work against the grain of the virtual. So Berlin's NFT community is rather unique compared to what we often see in public commentary. So in-person events, which number here at least four or five a week, include meetups, gallery exhibitions, hackathons, and education sessions. These events require immense amounts of labor to cultivate, often relying on unpaid community managers, but they're considered essential here for any NFT project. Berlin has also long been a city of artists, and accordingly, the NFT scene here tends to favor NFT art, often in single editions, over what my interlocutors here might call mere collectibles or silly apes sold for speculation or private um, or profile pictures. The events here often occupy what German studies scholar Andreas Hoysen calls the voids of Berlin. These voids are, place, are spaces cleared away by Berlin's history of war and division. They were squatted by the city's creatives in the 80s and the 90s and hosted its world-renowned visual art and techno music communities. In one such void today is Go Berlin, which is the city's first physical NFT museum. Its organizers first squatted the building in what was once West Berlin's downtown area and recently negotiated an official lease with the city just a few months ago. These spaces, these spaces are filled with the sound of techno and exhibitions follow with raves at clubs like Trezor, one of the city's earliest and leading techno clubs, itself an old warehouse near the former wall. These spaces and the creative energy they cultivate brand Berlin as a destination for artists, entrepreneurs, and tourists. And now they convince many here that Berlin can be, I quote, Europe's capital for NFTs. Here in these spaces, local artists find new platforms for their work, Collectors can buy local, so to speak, and even mint NFTs in person at these events, and entrepreneurs can sell their nascent projects. All of this amid the spaces and sounds of a city saturated with its all too recent history. The projects and objects that emerge here then circulate digitally and globally, but they remain products of their place, thus encoding Berlin's history, ethos, and quite frankly, brand into the metaverse. Local collectors build virtual voids of Berlin to display their NFTs, and one such collector's metaverse gallery is called the Factory. Uh, and according to his description, it's, I quote, located on the outskirts of Berlin, used to manufacture steel during the Second World War, and has been dormant for the past 35 years. Never mind that the digital platform hosting this factory turned gallery is just over a year old. And another local project called Mauer, referring to the Berlin Wall in German, is actually selling NFT pieces of a virtual Berlin Wall. And this simulates the real wall's fall in 1989 when locals and tourists picked off pieces of their own to collect as relics of history. And many of those pieces were then sold at auction. Um, and the Mauer project is going further and they're now actually making a virtual Berlin in the sandbox metaverse complete with Eastern and Western sides. And this venture also resembles the DDR Museum today in central Berlin, which features similarly immersive and digitally enhanced exhibits of East Berlin apartment blocks. You could even buy pieces of the real Berlin wall in the museum's gift shop. So what does this show us? First, we see that one kind of market distribution, say the share of NFTs that are art versus collectibles in the market does not scale proportionally across physical geography. So even NFT markets have their local flavors. 
Second, we see what is often missed online, those spontaneous encounters that come with sharing physical space, which, as I said, are considered critical for Web3 development here, but require lots of labor to enable. And third, we see what really drives the numbers of the market, the narratives and imaginaries that are inspired by and modeled after what happens here or what has happened here on this physical ground. We're turned away from those classic questions now like, defining money in the context of crypto or is decentralization like really decentralized or how much centralization remains which are really important questions and they remain so but instead we encounter one city's materiality its sociality and the ghost of its history so i'll leave us at there but thanks everyone for listening and uh thanks for for hosting this amazing event um, and happy to connect anyone with uh who's interested in learning more about what's happening here in berlin